Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Rex. Daniel. Daniel. Whiskeys. So today we're doing blended scotch. Yep. Now, now first things first, blended scotch, there's three categories of mixing whiskeys. Yeah. Uh, if you're just one distillery and you're making one product, there's two categories. Right. Blended malt, Rex. Yes. Blended grain, Daniel, just because we have to pick a visual. Ready? So, so if malt is better. I'm blended, yeah, if you're single malt, I'm single grain. Right. This is how you remember the variations. Then there's five products created below us. I'm more delicious? Yeah. If Rex makes two things... I command a higher price point? Then it's called blended malt. If I make two things, I, it's called blended grain. I win. And if he makes one and I make one and we mix them together, it's called blended scotch. I win more awards? Yeah. So blended scotch is what we're drinking today. It's a mix of the column still grain whiskey right. with single malt. Okay. Right? Fine. Now, uh, there's the two categories. If you're gonna, here's a, a rule of thumb. If you've had a shitty scotch, yes. it was probably a blended yes, scotch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a blended malt, but a blended scotch. Right. Right. But not all blended scotch is shit. True. Now, we're gonna start with one of the earliest brilliant innovators of blending grain and malt together, and that would be Ballantines. He, along with Dewars, Haig, Walker, so, and so on. This, like the moments after we started a whiskey channel. The cannon. A friend of mine gave me a whiskey. Mm-hmm. It was it. Oh, it's great. He said, so, He said, I have no idea if it's good. You're yeah. doing whiskey now, here's a whiskey. It's a budget, and it'll be, you know, 20, yeah. 25 bucks. No, he's but, not going to spend a lot. Yeah. This friend won't spend a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. So all I'm saying is, uh, this is the one that my dad and I keep at the house, yeah. at his house, so that we drink fancy stuff, and then we switch to Ballantines as we hang out longer and longer. <laughs> because you don't want to burn, at a certain point, your palate's gone. So, uh, and, and I still enjoy this, mm -hmm. right? Now... Remember that it was 1810 when John Walker uh, started a shop blending malts and a mercantile and all that, right? Yep. It was Alexander Walker who shifted their operations, some operations to London and began blending. So if you remember, grain whiskey got approved as real whiskey and in the 19, early 1900s, yep. like 1909. And then all of a sudden they started blending a grain with malt. Yep. And that's the beginnings of Buchanan. Ballantine, Dewars, Walker, mm -hmm. really taking over the world. And as a matter of fact, this is an interesting thing. When the world thinks about scotch, they think about smoky whiskey. When the world drinks scotch, they drink blends. Uh, so if you run the numbers, interesting. When if I said, you want some scotch, everyone right. almost instantly thinks of smoky whiskey. Ah. But if you look at the numbers of what's purchased in the world, right. the vast majority of whiskey sold is a blend. Huh. Vast yeah. majority. Which is rarely smoky. Rarely smoky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, I think, an ironic yeah. mix, <laughs> right? <laughs> I think because the smoky scotches, if you're thinking about it in the lexicon of all available drinks, mm -hmm. there's nothing like it. Mm. I totally agree. There's nothing like, but blended scotch. Well, there's sweet elements, and you got some, uh, you know, some dessert, yeah, fruity, I mean, floral. It's closer to the budget Irish, to me. Yeah. Budget, budget blended scotch is closer to budget Irish. So there's there's a lot of options when you're going for just like sweet, nice, friendly, classically enjoyable flavors. But when it comes to a, a standout option, then it's the smoky. Scotches that are there's it's incomparable. This Ballantines to me in the nose is mostly grain. Like it smells and they say there's over forty different yeah. whiskeys going into this blend. It's almost 40. like it's almost like there's some maltiness mixed with some grain. Yeah, and then there's a slightly musty wood note, right? All right. But almost a blend, really. Almost a blend, like yeah. Like it was blended. Like if I had to name this, I'd probably say like just, I mean, and I'm just picking this out of thin air. Yeah. A blended scotch, maybe? It's a bit on the nose. Yeah. A bit on the nose. It's too specific. <laughs> the taste on this, though, is uh, like a thin, sweet caramel with a slight smoky note at the end that just doesn't hang on to itself. You know what? It has more than a smoky note. It has a shortbread cookie note. Yeah. It's like actually, an Irish. Yeah, yeah, the grain in the malt. Like so, an Irish shortbread cookie. You don't smoke... Cigars as much as I do. Mm -hmm. You're like daily almost. I'm trying to scale back a little bit. I'm yes, not, not yes I am basically. I'm not I am basically the judgment. Okay, so there's a moment as a cigar smoker right. when you uh, didn't take a big enough puff, and so when you exhale, there's just a tiny puff of 
of smoke. And you feel like and it less of a man. Feel, yeah, it doesn't feel like that really rewarding, like, exhale of smoke. Right. It's like, mm -uh, pra, and it's like, poof, and it just kind of goes. <laughs> See, yeah. To me, that's the level of smoke that shows up in this Valentine's. So, There's a hint of smoke that's just like, meep. And, uh, <laughs> and then, that's nah, gone. It's so, it's so little. It's, it's kind not of, even. You wonder, did I imagine that? Yes, exactly. <laughs> did you, you, uh, you know what it's closer to? It's closer, if, if real smoke is a cigar smoker, mm -hmm. this is closer to those candy cigarettes mm -hmm. where they had one puff of this dust and then you ate them. <laughs> 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 that's how much smoke. Right. But we're going to switch. So Daniel, here's what I need you to do. I need you to compare this to every time we say good blend. Mm-hmm. We're obviously going to say. We're always going to say compass, compass box. box. We could have said there's some other good blends. We should do. I really like the Cuddy Sark Prohibition. That's a good blend. Right. But they're so consistently good, and and not just good, but like worth tracking down. Right. That's a whole other level. So we 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 play favorites with this a lot. But there's but a there's, reason there's for other, it. There's other options. Yeah, so right. this is called the Double Single by Compass Box, yeah. and this is a mix of a single malt and a single grain. I thought they already did a menage. There's only two, yeah, there's only two whiskeys in this. Right. There's, it's not a blend of a bunch of distilleries, yeah. there's two. Okay. There is uh, Gervin for the grain, mm -hmm. and Glen Elgin. Glen oh. Elgin is the malt. Anise and apple. Sweet, fresh, clean, malty, anise, and apple. This is the, so typically when a brand does a blended scotch, it's dominantly grain and they use malts to flavor it. Anise, apple juice. This is the opposite. This is 70 plus percent yeah. malt yeah. and less than 30 percent grain. Yeah, because the way they're blending, it's first and foremost, how do we make something really interesting? Yes. That star anise is, is just the first thing out of the glass. And then light, clean, and fresh. And you know that's got to be coming from Glen Elgin. And then there's like this, this honeyed bread. Oh, Immediately, man, this so good dense. And honey it is bread. honey bread. Like you ever go to a bread shop where they let you cut fresh cuts? Yeah. As a customer, and you get those overly thick slices of bread, mm -hmm. and then you just lather it with butter and honey. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what this is. I worked at a bread shop in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and one of the jobs of the customer service team mm -hmm. was that we always had bread on this table in the middle of the customer service counter, yeah. and anyone could walk into the store and request a slice of bread for free. Oh, nice. Anyone. Yeah. And it wasn't just like, here's your corner cut sample of bread. Right. It was like, you cut them a whole slice of bread, and you handed it to them, mm -hmm. And then there was honey and jam and all these things to put, and butter and all these things to put on it. Yeah, yeah. So we would regularly have people who would drive from across town just to come in, order a coffee, get their free massive slice of fresh bread, <laughs> and just hang out, yeah. right? Tiny bit of salt on that. If you live with it long enough, you can start to get the barrel. Yeah, I think Hiding that the salt is the barrel. I think, I totally agree. That it's like someone did a pinch of salt onto yeah. the top of something you're about to eat. Yeah. And so that instead of the salt tasting like it's mixed in, mm -hmm. it tastes like you salted something. Yeah. Or like you ever have a chocolate where they have the sea salt chunks? Yeah. And it definitely feels like it's outside the chocolate. Yep. It's like that. But I think that's the barrel. It's really good. Yeah, I think this barrel spice, that's fantastic. Uh, it's really good. Okay. Now, hit us with some comments. Dylan Tyler, my best friend, is getting married in June. We watch you guys religiously and enjoy all of the knowledge you both instill in us. Can we toast to Mr. Jack Compton and his next chapter in life? Love you guys, Dylan. What a great name. Jack Compton. Cheers to you, my friends. I think, I think, let's just get this thrown. You magnificent <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Good luck on your dog sled race in Alaska. <laughs> Is that the guy's name? <laughs> That's a, I don't know, but the name Jack Compton is like, Jack right, London, sounds right? Like ja it hey, just feels hey, like he should. You, you know, you know Andrew Harrison. Mm -hmm. He looks like a failed magician, or, or a Civil War colonel, or <laughs> yeah, Civil War colonel. Yeah, and then uh, and then, <laughs> and then Chad said, "God, we'll show you a picture of the guy." Here's the guy. Here's the guy. <laughs> Looks like Civil War General. Looks like Colonel Sanders' idiot nephew. <laughs> idiot nephew. Looks like a failed magician. 
Yeah. It looks like he should be driving in 1996 LeSabre. Yeah, oh god. <laughs> yeah, or a restored Model T. <laughs> yes, yeah, restored Model T. Ironically wearing a monocle and a top hat. Yeah, yeah, he could, no, he could wear a monocle and a top hat and totally get away with it. Andrew's a good and guy. And have a like a, a breast pocket pocket watch. Andrew's a good guy. Uh, Wayne Clark. Hey, Daniel and Rex, I just bought an eight-year-old blended scotch and was wondering whether the malt is at least eight years old or the grain or both. Yes. So if it's blended, even if it's blended, the Scottish rules still apply that you can't call something older than the youngest thing in the list. Mm -hmm. And so if it's at least eight years old, then even the grain whiskey is at least eight years old. Mm. Frank Lampard, I believe there's a good case for saying that Compass Box has done more to raise the reputation of grain whiskey than anyone in recent years. I totally agree. Yeah, it's just, it's a thing. The thing is, That's a thing. so, it does feel a little unfair because there are companies that have been doing really high quality blended whiskey for like 200 years <laughs> and they don't get any recognition because they're considered the water we swim in. Right. They're considered normal. Right. Right. Compass Box has the benefit of being new and fresh. Yeah. Combined with actually being amazing artists at what they do. And they have really cool labels. Yeah. So why not? You know what? I'm gonna put this out there. Mm -hmm. I think Compass Box is the Radiohead of Scotch. So you had to do. You had to say. You had to go there. Yeah. You had to go. They're there. the Radiohead of whiskey. Who is the? I keep thinking of comedians and not, not not musicians. Not musicians. <laughs> They're uh, the Eddie Izzard of Scotch. <laughs> <laughs> Intelligence. It's, it's you, you always rambling draw, humor. You always draw for musicians, and I was like, I can't think of a musician. Yeah. Like, like, no, that's no, that's another, that's another comedian. Shit, that's another comedian. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie Izzard. All that's right. who they are. But they're Radiohead for Scotch, I think. All right. How's Daniel month going so far? Well, I gotta say, I'm enjoying it. Are you saturated? Has the illegitimacy seeped into your pores? No. So that no, the glory. There's the glory. This, has seeped into the my pores. Stink is just coming off you. <laughs> That's called raw sex appeal and pheromones. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. I left because the hormones. <laughs> yeah, and if you drink, you got me chubbed up. <laughs> may you drink with me. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.